Greetings and salutations, my fellow word ninjas. That's right, it's time for Full Coverage Writers to bring you another little run-through of a work packet. Alright, today we're going to be doing a Plot in 60 Minutes workshop. That's right, we're doing a speed run of creating a plot. So, grab your pens and pencils and papers, or fire up your word processor of choice. Make sure your typewriter ink ribbons are ready. Let's dive right in. Alright, for this workshop, you can find the materials over at fcwriters.com. As you can see on our screen over here, I have the website up. Now, if you scroll down to the fourth little hourglass, you get to the worksheets. Click on that, roll over to the worksheets page, and at the moment it is the first one on the list, but depending on when you view this, it may be lower. Just look for the Plot in 60 Minutes work packet. And you can click on that, and it brings you to the specific page. All right, now the work packet is downloadable all the way at the bottom. Download the PDF version right there. Now, depending on your browser, it may just pop the PDF up right then and there. But as you can see, if you go down to the lower right-hand corner of your browser, just click on the floppy disk icon, and it'll save for you wherever you happen to want to save your downloaded files. And then you can play with it right there. Now this is a revised version of the work packet because it has forms. That's right. You can now add whatever you want typed into the PDF right then and there and save it. Just like that. Alright, let's go back to the beginning. Alright, now this worksheet has 10 different pages. Some of them are multiple parts of a segment, some of them are standalone. So I'm going to run you through each segment, and then when I say pause, you're going to pause this video and use a timer or a stopwatch of your choice to keep track of the particular amount of time for that segment. That way you're not just having to stream a 90 minute video where I'm talking for a few minutes and then there's 20 minutes of dead silence while you're writing it's not necessary to have 20 minutes of dead air on video just so you don't have to pause the video. And this way, if necessary, you get distracted or something comes up and you need to pause in a segment, okay, then you can just keep this video paused, pause your own stopwatch as necessary, and then come back when you need to. All right, let's get through the intro and then I'll set things up for the first segment. The reason we're doing a Plot in 60 Minutes workshop with a work packet is because everyone has a story in them. But not everyone has time to find that story, or necessarily has the motivation to write that story. And some of us just aren't brave enough to write that story. But we're writers. Because you've even looked for this video and decided to click on it, that means that you have some sort of motivation or interest or inspiration, some reason to want to write. And as Full Coverage Writers likes to portray us, word ninjas, because we have to adapt to a continuously more multitasking lifestyle. And as word ninjas, we find the time to write. We're brave enough to put down our ideas onto paper. We're willing to go the extra mile to get our words written. But even as word ninjas, we need extra resources every once in a while. I mean, real life is not easy. So that's where this work packet comes in handy. We try to pull something together so that even in your busy lifestyle, here's something that only takes one hour. That's just one hour out of your day to figure out the bare bones foundation of a new story or to expand on a story you already have an idea of but really need to flesh it out a little bit and just get it down onto paper. Now, as I said, this takes 60 minutes. We're going to start with your characters, because unless you're writing a 1970s style sci-fi pulp story, chances are your characters are going to play a very prominent role in your story. There are very few concept-driven plots out there anymore. I mean, 
I'm not going to stop you. If you want to do something very high level, conceptual, story type stuff, you're the writer. You're free to do as you please. But this is the way we've outlined it. So if you need to jump ahead to these story questions and opposable plot point segments, I won't be offended. But for the rest of you, we're going to kick things off with the character foundations. Now, those are on pages one through three of this work packet. And the timeline for this one is 10 minutes. So you have 10 minutes to go through these three pages. Now, to give you an idea of what's going to be on these, it's primarily who are your primary protagonists, if you have multiples, and who are your primary antagonists. So who's going to be your hero and your villain, as it were? Now, I know not every story has a hero and a villain. I'm just using those as terms for this particular page. It's mainly who is your main character going to be? Now, if you're jumping back and forth between two primary point of views, okay, try and squeeze those in here. I know it's a little tight, but every little bit of info that you can get down on your main characters will help, and then you can refer back to this as necessary. And of course, we start digging a little deeper on page two with your secondary protagonist and antagonist. So who are your sidekicks and your minions? Who is your Darth Vader to your Emperor? Things like that. And of course, page three is your tertiary characters. Who are the extra ones that your main, char main and secondary characters interact with that there are certain details about their personality or just something about them that you want written down for future reference? Now, you don't have to fill all three pages out in full within these 10 minutes. It's more a matter of trying to get down as much as you can. And then after this exercise, if you have more, you can expand on it later when you have more time. All right, remember, three pages, 10 minutes, and pause now and go. All right, pencils down, ladies and men folk. Your 10 minutes are up. It's now time to migrate to your plot your story questions. You're now going to be going on to pages four and five, and you have 15 minutes for these two pages. You know why? Because this is where the heart of your plot is going to be. This is where you really start to understand what are your characters going to be doing in your story. This is going to be where the heart of your story lies. Now, your story questions on page four are all about your inciting incident. What gets this ball rolling? The inciting incident may not actually make it into your finished story. The readers may never really see the inciting incident, but it's important for you as the writer to know what got all of this started. Whether it incites your antagonists into doing something, which then your protagonists have to respond in some way, shape, or form, or if your protagonist falls and breaks his leg, which would be unfortunate. I mean, what really gets things started? And to delve a little deeper, we also have the questions of what does your primary protagonist want or need? What's driving them through this plot? Presumably, the inciting incident has some part to play in this. I mean, their house catches on fire, so now they need a home. I mean, their house is burned down, it's not livable. What are they going to do from there? That can drive the plot forward from, the, from page one. What is their plan? How are they going to obtain, find, or otherwise receive what they want or need? And what are the stakes involved? If there's no stakes, if it's, oh, well, I have $50 billion, I'll just buy the house down the street. Fine, no problem. That's no conflict. That's not a worthwhile story to read. There need to be stakes and consequences and repercussions involved in some way, shape, or form to make this plot engaging and believable. The opposable plot points page page five, which is part of this segment, covers your antagonist side. So what are the bad guys doing to complicate matters? I mean, did they set this house on fire? And how are they going to slow down your main characters from page one? And I mean, what are their interests? Why are they going against your main characters? Is it just for the heck of it? Are they being paid to do this? Is there a grudge involved? There's reasons. Even the Joker has reasons to do what he does against Batman. What other stuff is involved that provides complications for your main characters? Now remember, only these two pages are to be done in this segment. And you have 15 whole minutes to figure this out. Because this is really where things kick off. And the following segment is going to 
ride on this and expand it further, but you really need this core beginning to be able to move forward. So get ready, set your timer for 15 minutes, and go. All right, welcome back. Pencils down. It's time to move on to the next segment. Hopefully by now you have a pretty solid understanding of just where your story is going to begin, even if that beginning doesn't necessarily make it to page one. And you have somewhat better understanding of just why your characters are going to do what they're doing. Why do they start acting the way they do at the beginning of page one on the readable story? To better understand where they're going to go, it's time to move on to pages six, seven, and eight, expanding your plot. All right, now these pages are all about creating three plot points. This is not your inciting incident. This happens after your inciting incident. Now the goal of this is to create three key milestones within your overall story that your characters are striving towards and once they reach it they'll go on to the next one. So expand, so on page six you have a milestone that they're striving towards. How do they reach page seven's milestone expansion? And then by extension page eight milestone. Now for this one you have 20 minutes because you need to think of three key plot points that are spaced far enough apart within the storyline that they're significant enough not to be blended together. What are both sides of the equation for this plot point? Now, both sides are not necessarily going to make it into the finished story, but it's best for the writer to understand where both sides are coming from. I mean, if you only know your protagonist side, then your antagonist can just come out of nowhere with a curveball that you don't expect and then you might get a little bit stuck because you don't know where the hell did this come from? What am I going to do with this? Like, what the heck? At least if you have a better understanding of your antagonist's side, you'll be able to better figure out like, okay, so my villain is going to be doing this in the background while my hero is off trying to find this magical sword. And little fiddly background details that are useful for you to know, but you'll have to only hint at within the story for the readers. And of course, is there a resolution to this plot point? It can act as kind of like a micro-climax within the overall plot. You're ramping things up, you're raising the stakes a little bit, but then one side or the other matches that stakes, and they figure something out. They find the magical sword, or the villain steals the magical sword, and now the next plot point result revolves around something else. Or either, okay, now you have to go chase the villain for the magical sword. But there has to be th enough stuff within that one micro-climax and micro-resolution to engage readers so that they want to find out what happens next. What's the next plot point? How are the characters going to deal with what's happened in this plot point and move forward? And as we said, you have 20 whole minutes to work on these three pages of the work packet. So, get ready, pages 6 through 8, set your timer for 20 minutes, and go! Alright, welcome back again. Hopefully by now you have at least one or two, if not all three, key in-between plot points sorted out to some degree. This will really help you better balance your story across all 50,000 to 100,000 words, depending on the length that you're hoping to reach. This way, everything isn't just squished together at the very beginning or two-thirds throughout the story, all of a sudden things ramp up and then you hit the climax and it's done. This way you can space things out somewhat evenly so the entire story is balanced with engaging content of the main characters going through the plot from milestone to milestone and there's enough in between fiddly bits that the reader wants to turn to the next page. But now it's time for the grand finale. What is the end game scenario of this plot? What is at stake for your protagonist and antagonists at this final climax? This is the time to go all out with your stakes and the consequences, the repercussions. This is where all the little loose ends from the inciting incident, your three primary milestones, all those loose ends are slowly being weaved together. Now, it's okay if there are a few loose ends after this still, 
but the main goal of this is to wrap up the primary threads of your story in a believable and satisfying manner. So what is the primary challenge for the climax? Presumably your characters have made progress throughout this story and achieved various goals or evolved from the inciting incident with their personalities or their issues, whatever happens to be part of your story. What is the primary challenge? What is the final goal that they are trying to accomplish or reach? And of course, what is at stake for both sides of your equation, your protagonists, your antagonists? And just as important, what is the resolution? How does this all end? What is the fallout or the damage done to your characters or the story world overall? Do your heroes get the magical sword and save the world? Or does the villain manage to defeat them and maintain global domination for another thousand years? What happens after the climax is done? Now for this one, you have 10 whole minutes because this is a, just as an important part as the rest of your milestones and your inciting incident. So for this one page, you have 10 whole minutes to figure out the end. So get ready, set your timers, and go. All right, ladies and men folk, it's time for one last page. We're almost there. Hopefully you have a better understanding of just how your plot has started from beginning to end. But just as with most stories, Happily Ever After is not the end. The last page is not the end. The stories go on, and this is your chance to write down those loose ends. What is still left unresolved within your story? if anything is left unresolved in your story. And it's also a chance to better understand how have your characters grown? How has your protagonist evolved since the beginning of your story to now? Have they gotten a better understanding of who they are or what's expected of them? Have they reached their goals or accomplished what they set out to do? And the same for your antagonist. Are there any loose ends that still need to be addressed either for you to work back into the story while you're writing it, or is there going to be a sequel? Is there another underlying complication that was not figured out that will need to be addressed in book two? Now this one is going to be a quick hit because you only have five minutes to do this one. So write fast and let's wrap this work packet up. Remember, set your timers for five minutes and go. All right, we got through it. I sincerely hope that you really got something useful out of going through this work packet and taking the time to try and flesh out your story and your characters and just get a better understanding of what you're going to be writing about now. If you enjoyed this work packet, then we would love for you to share this video, subscribe to our channel, hit that thumbs up button, show your appreciation in the comments by saying how useful or even not useful this was. If you didn't get anything out of this, not one thing, if this was a complete bust for you, please do let us know. Our goal is to provide useful resources for writers so that they can become more efficient and effective in their writing. Whether you got something out of this or nothing, please do let us know. We want to make the best resources possible for all of you. You can email us at wordninjas at fcwriters.com or just post a comment in this YouTube video. Thank you for your time. Get writing already.